Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seed. Roder Tobin back at the Southwest Ag Conference, joined again by Kirsten Wise from the University of Kentucky, and uh, a pathologist, and another pathologist, Albert Tenuta from OMAFRA. And I want to talk about um, fungicide application. And one question we always hear, you know, should I go go ground? Should I apply aerial? Um, how do you answer that question? Well, there's a lot of pros and cons to both application methods. Um, in Kentucky, at least, we have a lot more interest in ground application. And farmers in Kentucky, they're looking for flexibility. Um, with the ground application, they have a lot more choice in when they apply. They can control when the application is going to occur, as opposed to aerial, where you might just have to spray when the plane is there that day. Mm. Um, also, product choice is very important. Um, some aerial applicators, they have one product, that's what they're going to spray. If you contract with them, that's the product you're going to get. And with all the new fungicides and new active ingredients we have, uh, farmers are more interested in choice than they used to be, and so that's a, a big benefit as well. Mm. Now. The one big pro for aerial application is that you can spray a lot of acres in a very short amount of time. So if there's a disease threat or a particular timing that needs to be hit, you can get more applied in a short amount of time with an aerial application compared to a ground rig. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you about a project you worked on this summer, a corn spray rodeo, where yep. you looked at all kinds of different application methods. Tell me what you were up to and what you learned. Oh yeah, no, that was a fun one. You know, Dr. Dave Hooker, Jason DeVoe, and myself um, looked at various ground versus aerial applications. It's very similar to what Kirsten was just talking about. And the, you know, what we noticed and what we found out right away is that um, anything that delivered the the spray or the application closer to that ear leaf, those silks. So we had all we had over the top broadcast. We had drop nozzles. Um, we had combinations of both. And so in many cases, those combinations work quite effectively at getting both coverage. We had water sensitive papers. Plus, we also used a copper tracer to to quantify you know those those finer droplets that might not get captured on those water sensitive papers. And we found that you know those. Um, those, those alternating or combination application methods, the broadcast versus the delivery into the canopy itself with drop nozzles or, or mimicking the drop nozzles worked most effectively. And the other cool thing that we noticed is very similar to what we saw with wheat um, previously on, on uh, Fusarium Headlight is that aerial applications, those fine droplets, get um, can be captured uh, quite effectively. So we found that aerial versus ground were very similar in terms of delivering the product where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, if you had you know, the right product, right pressure, right spread, right nozzle, you can, you can do, uh, you can be effective from the air or on the ground. Right, so if you have, if you do everything right, mm -hmm. you have a very high probability yeah. of getting it where you need. If you do everything if, right. If you do something wrong, that has a big impact on, on that delivery and your success rate. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about something we're going to see a lot more, I think, in the future, and that's yeah. drones. And you, uh, you've been working uh, with some farmers in your neck of the woods on drone application. Talk about what you're seeing, what you're learning. Yeah, so this is also a really fun project that we had this year. Um, in Kentucky, we have a commercial drone applicator um, outfit, mm -hmm. and they contacted us, and we were able to set up some trials with some farmers to spray corn fungicides via drone. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went out very similar to what Albert did with the spray rodeo, set up some replicated strips and some water-sensitive paper to look at coverage. Um, and it was a really kind of a cool process. Now the logistics of applying with a drone are going to be a little different. It's going to take a little bit longer, you have a lot of refill trips, etc. Um, but coverage was great, it was comparable to what we would see from an aerial application or a ground application. Um, and efficacy was really good. Um, we got good disease control. Um, in one of our trials we had a, a nice yield benefit and, and the farmers were really happy with the applications. And you mentioned, um, you know, your fields, smaller, <laughs> a lot of trees. Um, uh, very similar to a lot of maybe uh, Eastern Ontario, yeah, a lot sure. of areas of Ontario, uh, so, so some similar applications. Oh, absolutely, and that is something that we want to, we were hoping to get one in this year, but we weren't able to. So anybody out there that has a drone that would like mm -hmm. us to participate, come call, <laughs> give us a call right away. <laughs> awesome. Hey, so uh, some great insights. Thank you both for stopping by and uh, filming us in. Thank you for it's the opportunity. Pleasure.